normally your boy is not going to do a segment about pit football. It just doesn't really happen for me like that. But A, Pitt is 7-0 and now, and B, looking like a real contender for the ACC championship in a way that they hadn't before their decisive win against Syracuse on Thursday night. A lot of things to unpack there. The first one is Cal McCord might never play a worse football game in his entire life, and I am fairly certain that he had never played a football game worse than the one that he played against Pittsburgh on Thursday night. For those of y'all that don't know, it's not that Ohio State had him as a starting quarterback last year and he went 11-1. and It's that Kyle McCord is a five-star quarterback from St. Joe's Prep where he was throwing passes to Marvin Harrison Jr. And at the time, he was the more highly touted recruit coming out of high school. And really could have ended up at Michigan the way that J.J. McCarthy could have ended up at Ohio State. But Kyle McCord and Marvin Harrison Jr. going to Ohio State was a really big deal because you could look at it this way. The way that Tua Tonga-Valoa was with Jalen Waddle at Alabama, Joe Burrow was with Jamar Chase at LSU, felt like that was in the offing for Kyle McCord and Marvin Harrison Jr. And what had happened was, it turned out Marvin Harrison Jr. is actually Marvin the Martian the Alien and was the offense last year, and Kyle McCord made a living last year throwing him the football. But with the loss to Michigan and the way that people had talked about him all season, he decides to go in the transfer portal. It felt like Devin Brown was going to get that job anyway, or someone was going to come along in the portal and take it. So you move on from Kyle McCord. Kyle McCord moves on from you, goes to Syracuse. At Syracuse, he had thrown for 300 yards in every game they had played, and they were... 5-1. It's a good football team. And then they came up against this Pitt team. What is remarkable to me about how this game unfolded is that the reason that Pitt's not really been on the radar, aside from the top 25 that I put together, one I don't dedicate a segment to, is A, I wasn't sure that the defense was any good. That has changed. And B, I wasn't sure that they could really challenge in the ACC because it's been Clemson, Miami, and then we kind of sort of talk about Pitt. We started kind of sort of talk about SMU. But that had been it. And in this night, you look at the stat sheet, you're going to go, what the hell happened? But I watched this game from start to finish, and it was uh, cuckoo for po- Cocoa Puffs there from the word go. Kyle McCord threw five interceptions in this game. He threw three pick sixes in the first half alone. The game wasn't even as close as the score indicates. And I'm looking at this, and I'm going, Pitt can't move the football, and it doesn't matter because not only are they picking Kyle McCord off, from the jump, like the first interception that was made was a pass that was tipped. My man was on the ground, like with his hands out, his belly on the ground. He catches the ball as it drops into his hands. That's how it was just going for Pitt all night. That said, Kyle McCord still managed to rush, uh, rush for, pass for 300 yards. Uh, on f- 57 attempts. <laughs> what I love most about Fran Brown in this instance is Fran said, you know what? To hell with it. I'm not pulling him. He's the starter. He's the guy. I, I've decided that he is going to be the man that wins this game or loses this game for us, and we're not going no other way. And they couldn't run the football, but even if they could run the football, I'm not sure that they were trying to run the football because, you know, you, you look up and the man throws the ball 57, 58, 59, 60 times, 300 plus yards and then you see the five interceptions and then you find out that you know three of them were returned for touchdowns and you can see how this gets out of hand quick fast in a hurry I knew that the pit offense could go I knew that I've seen what Eli Holstein has been able to do I think Cade Bell up until this game was one of the five best coordinators in the country given what we have seen from Pitt last year who went three and nine obviously they had the 2021 year where they won the ACC championship but this felt like just a different team and part Narduzzi's been around for all of it. This is year 10 for him. So up, down, it doesn't matter. If the defense is going, the defense is going. They had whatever that Syracuse wanted to do figured out. They were dropping when they should be dropping. They were rushing when they should be rushing. They had linebackers sitting when they should sit. And they had outstanding cornerback play on the outside. Uh, I was more impressed with what they did with Aronde Gadsden than anything else. That man was held to just three catches, 33 yards. And that's a great way to stifle anything that Syracuse wants to do offensively. It also doesn't really bode well for UNLV. 
because UNLV took a loss to Syracuse, and they still got to play Boise State on Friday night. But now that loss doesn't look so good with what Pitt has done, and Pitt goes to 7-0 and as we're going into a weekend where there are nine undefeated teams left, and two of them are in the ACC, and if Miami and Pitt are playing for the ACC title, that means something happened to Clemson, or SMU could even get there, right? I also think that another way of looking at this that we just don't talk about is the way that Pitt football is looked at by Pittsburghers. And I don't think I'm speaking out of school here because uh, one of my best friends is a Yenzer and has introduced me to so much about Pittsburgh that is cool. Uh, actually went to her wedding and designed shoes for her to wear at her wedding, and that was very cool. Anyway, we're very close. And she went to Pitt, University up. But I told her, no, Pitt's good. And she's like, what? It's like, yeah, the, the Panthers are good. It's going to RJ, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Steeler fan. I don't, I'm not a Pittsburgh fan. But you went to school there. I don't know what to tell you. And then I would rattle off all the people that went to Pitt, like Tony Dorsett, you know, Larry Fitzgerald, Aaron Donald, Darrell Rivas. <laughs> I keep going. Like, it's, it's a long list. Me and Joe Green. Like, we can keep going down the list on this, man. And I was like, Kenny Pickett went to Pitt. And she's like, RJ, I didn't know about Kenny Pickett until he got drafted by the Steelers. <laughs> I'm dying because that is apparently what it is. And I'm reminded back when Mac Brown was in that Thursday night spot that Dan Mullen was in, they had a game at Pittsburgh. And I think Pat McAfee was actually in that booth too. And they brought in Pittsburgh dad, which is a YouTuber that you should definitely watch. I enjoy the content, but he really does have the understanding and the pulse of that town. And they brought him out Thursday night for a Pittsburgh game. And they were interviewing him on the sideline. And he was aghast. He was miffed. He said, where are the Steelers? And, he, and they're like, what are you talking about? You told me Pittsburgh was playing tonight. I don't see no Steelers. And he said, they're like, yeah, it's the University of. It's the Pitt Panthers. They're really good. And he is blown away going, I have been bamboozled. I have been duped. We got a college team? Since when does we have a college team? And why do we care? They're not the Steelers. Why are they playing on an NFL Sunday after, or Sunday evening game? It's like, well, it's Thursday. You know what I mean. I thought that was funny. Um, I also thought it was a really great way to kind of underscore Pitt being great in Pittsburgh doesn't seem to mean as much <laughs> as Pitt being great outside of Pittsburgh because the Steelers run that town, and for good reason, right? Like, I'm not here to, to shame Pittsburgh or to talk about Steelers fans in some kind of rude way. I do think that, you know, one of my best friends who went to Pittsburgh because it's a great writing school and, you know, like for what I was going for the PhD in, creative nonfiction, Lee Gutkind and them, they kind of invented, if you will, the genre. From that standpoint, in a public university, it is solid. But I got to do a late night spot. When I get the late night show, speaking that into existence, get the late night show where we do sports, I got to do a man on the street where I just walk up to Yenders and go, so what are the Pitt Panthers colors? Or... Uh, do you know how many college football Hall of Famers went to Pitt? Or how many first-round draft picks? Or did you know that the greatest defensive tackle who has ever lived, his name is Aaron Donald, he went to Pitt. Uh, did you know that Larry Fitzgerald, who's on the cover of NCAA 2005 and is on the short list of one of the greatest wide receivers who ever lived, went to Pitt? Did you know that Johnny Majors, before he was at Tennessee, won a friggin' national championship in 1976 with Tony Dorsett winning a Heisman Trophy at Pitt. I'm sure that there's some of y'all that know that. And I know that I'm talking to a college football audience and I'm sure that there's a Pittsburgher out there who's a Panther fan who's watching this going, I feel attacked right now because I know all of these things. I'm not talking about you. But I do challenge you to go wherever it is that they be drinking yingling and ask them straight up, where did Aaron Donald go to school? Where did Larry Fitzgerald go to school? Where did Tony Dorsett go to school? And if they start to catch on, throw them the curveball of uh, Darrell Rivas, or better yet, just throw a Penn Stater in there. Be like, where did Larry Johnson Jr. go? You know what I mean? Uh, th throw Saquon Barkley in there. See what happens. But I was, I was, I, I needed to get out here and talk about this because Pitt is 7-0, and and like Indiana, it feels in that second tier of undefeated teams, you know, the ones that are behind Oregon, for instance. But... If you look at the top 25 and you're going down a list of unbeatens, once you get past Oregon, you got to go a ways before we start to really care about who else is undefeated. And you get to Indiana quicker than you might think. And then you got Pitt, who's ranked at number 19, 
behind the number 18 Ole Miss. And I'm not sure that Pitt, given the defense that I saw, couldn't beat Ole Miss. And Ole Miss has to worry about that when we talk about the college football playoff. Because does an 11-1 Pitt get in over a two-loss SEC team? That is going to be an interesting question. But right now, they are five wins away from being 12-0. And I just don't see another loss for them on the schedule. 